Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying video, I'm going to show you how to tie the wing on one of my favorite dry flies of all time, the Comparadun. Stay tuned. Let's start tying this deer hair Comparadun wing. For starters, in my Stonfo came in vice, I have just an everyday dry fly hook. And let me talk a little bit about the, the hook that I prefer. For the dry fly portion, I'm talking about a light wire hook. And I prefer a straight eye hook for Comparadons. I really just think it gives a great profile to the fly. For those newer to fly tying, straight eye just simply means that the eye extends straight out from the hook. The most common hook type is a down eye, where uh, the, the eye is pointing down about a, at a 45 degree angle. And we also have some up eye versions. But this light wire straight eye hook is one that I really prefer for the Comparadons. Next, I'm just going to add a little bit of thread. I'm going to be using some Uni Thread A dot. Just build a little base near the eye of the hook. And I'm going to extend my thread back a little bit past the halfway point. And it's right now where I'm going to add just some tailing fibers to this pattern. Some tires will first tie in their, um, their Comparadon wing, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, whenever I'm tying in the, the tailing fibers, I like to get them in first because I can clip away the butt ends and I don't have to worry about them really just coming into any, any contact with the Comparadon wing. And I also don't have to worry about accidentally clipping it as I'm trying to cut away the butt ends for these tailing fibers. So just grab whatever your tailing fibers are that you prefer to use. Some Coke de Leon, some micro fibbits. In this case, I'm just going to grab some hackle fibers. I'm going to get a, a nice clump of them. Just line them up. Lock those in place. And I can really just let those hang back there and I'll worry about those later. Instead, I'm just going to now move forward to I'm about, we'll say about two hook eyes back from the actual front of the hook. And it's at this point we're going to be adding in our deer wing. Now for our Comparadon wing, I want to first talk a little bit about the deer hair in case you don't have any yet for this fly. Now the deer hair that I prefer is called Coastal Deer Hair. And here's a look at one of my patches that I've been using recently. Um, I've really tied a lot of Comparadons and other patterns from this patch. But there's a reason why I look for certain patches. And there's a few characteristics that I'm looking for whenever I, I purchase Coastal Deer Hair. For starters, I want to make sure that the majority of the fibers are relatively straight. Even though I'm near the end of this piece, you can see that all the fibers are straight. There's a few over here that have a little bit of a bend to them, but it's nothing that will impact the fly. Next, I want to make sure that all of the fibers are very slender. Because whenever I lock them in place on Comparaduns, they're going to extend back towards, um, we'll say, the, the body and a little bit past the thorax of the fly. And I don't want to bulk up the fly too much. And then finally, I want to make sure that they have very fine tips and a very dark or almost black tip to them. If you can't see that right away, what I recommend is just grabbing a piece of white paper and at a few points in that, in that patch, just put the paper against those fibers and see if you can see those really fine, almost black tips. If that patch has them, then you probably found a great Comparadon deer hair patch. There's another patch that's being sold right now, and it's being marketed as a humpy deer hair patch. And these are also great for Comparadons because they really have those same characteristics. Straight fibers, they're very slender, and they have those really perfect pointy dark tips. Now, the reason this is being marketed as humpy deer hair is because they're really long pieces of deer hair. And that really helps whenever you're tying a humpy dry fly because then you can get that deer hair over the body and also tie it in as the wing too. So you can use both of these. Um, this is really nice. This humpy deer hair, I really prefer it for the smaller Comparadons because it is such a fine deer hair material. I can tell you that whenever I'm selecting pieces of deer hair, I will pull every one from the fly shop and look through every single piece. I really uh, care about the material that I'm buying and I want to make sure that I'm buying the highest quality piece that's available at that time. So don't be afraid to take five or 10 minutes, open up all the packages and just, just rifle through them and see exactly what the differences are between all those deer hairs. All right, next we have our clump. I'm going to just take from this, this patch, I guess a healthy clump of deer hair for our fly. 
It's tough for me to define what that healthy clump looks like or how many fibers are in it. You'll never catch me counting those fibers. But basically, I want to pull a clump of, of deer hair that will extend around the hook 180 degrees in kind of a fan-like, um, we'll say basically in a fan-like shape. So I'm, I'm trying to grab a clump that will, will do that not be too bulky and not be too slender. So once I have, we'll just say a relatively healthy clump, I'm gonna take them, I'm gonna trim them with a pair of scissors. I don't use my everyday tying scissors for this, my fine tipped scissors instead. I have a pair of scissors that are really just dedicated to cutting more bulky materials and wires. And I'll use those for this deer hair as well. Once I trim them, I'm next gonna clean them out. By that means, I'm just gonna hold them by the tips just get all this excess material out of the way. You'll see a lot of that stuff flying out of there. You can also grab a comb and brush some of that stuff out. Do the same by the tips. And once you have all that stuff cleaned out of the way, you're ready then to stack these fibers. I've also heard that some guys will collect all that stuff, that, all that fluff that comes out of them and use that stuff. I have not done so personally. Now at this point, if you look just by me flipping them around, you can see that they're relatively even. Do I have to stack them? That's really up to you. And I'll tell you in some cases, if they look really straight to me at this point, I will just immediately tie them in. I don't worry so much about the time that it, that it takes to stack them because it's a really quick process. I just don't really believe that they have to be perfectly straight all the time. I know that in nature, there are a few things that are perfect. And I really like that splayed look that these this deer hair wing gives. And I think that by having those tips at different points, and we're, we're talking millimeters, that I don't think it's going to make that big of an impact. And it may even fish better just because it looks a little bit, bit natural. However, in the, the world of fly tying, the recommendation is to stack these. And I do stack them the majority of times. So I'm just going to take them tips first and place them into the stacker. Now, I've been using stackers for years. I have a bunch of different ones. This is a great one. I really have, have kind of turned to this one recently in the last couple of years. This is a stacker made from Stonfo. What's nice about it, it's got a significant weight to it. At the base, there's a rubber bottom. So whenever you tap it against uh, objects, it really doesn't make a loud noise. And it also came with a couple different size cylinders at the top, depending on what type of deer hair you're gonna be using. Once I have my deer hair in there, I'm just gonna stack it around, we'll say four to six times. Then whenever I pull it out, I'm gonna turn it so that the opening is going in the same direction as my tailing fibers. Just remove it and look at all of my tips. Now I can see right now, there are one or two that just don't look like they're lined up perfectly. So I can put them back into place with my finger, or if I really don't like how they're looking, I can just place it back in the stacker stack again and pull them out there's one in there that's just not i don't think he's he wants to play this game at all i'm just going to grab all my my deer hair by their tips and transfer them to my left hand it's at this point that you just want to make sure that they're lined up once they are lined up we're going to measure them against our hook and what i'm looking for whenever i'm thinking about their length i want them to really fall in line with We'll say directly behind that hook eye to the bend of the hook. That's where I want my fingers to really be. So whenever I move it up, I can immediately start wrapping at that point. And right now they really fall in line with that in terms of their length. And I also want to mention that if I'm ever thinking about undersizing versus oversizing this wing, I am always going to oversize because it's just so much easier to see on the water. And I really, I think it gives a great profile to the fly. So I have my wing lined up, and this is probably the toughest part of the entire process. I'm gonna make three wraps. One, two, three. And I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not pulling tight, I'm, I'm not doing a thing. Once I have those three really loose wraps in place, I'm gonna pull straight down. And you're gonna see all of my deer hair fibers just splay all over the place. Now at this point, they're really not locked securely to the hook, so I'm just gonna put some really aggressive wraps in and then start winding back towards my tailing fibers. Now at this point, they're relatively locked in. And I know that because if I let go with my left hand, all of these deer hair fibers should be staying, we'll say just, just basically going horizontally towards the back. And they are, they're not flaring too much. Now at this point, I wanna get those base fibers out of there. And 
and I really want to make sure I don't also cut those tailing fibers that I have in place. So I'm just going to kind of lift them up a few at a time, trim them away, and I'm still using those the heavy duty scissors. If I cut a few tips, I'm not too worried about it. Looks like I got them all. If you really want to clean this up, and let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see this. It's a little too much. If you want to really clean it up, then you can take some of your, your fine tip scissors and just touch up a little bit on these fibers. Now, it's really your choice when you lock all these butt ends in place, but basically we want to go through all these butt ends and we want to build a nice transition from the body to the thorax. Once we have that transition, then we can finish the wing. Now, I'm not going to tie this, this uh, fly completely. I really just want to focus on the wing of it. So next, we have a couple things we, we want to look at. For starters, I'm going to take a look at the fly facing from the front. I want to make sure that those fibers are really fanned out 180 degrees from the whole way around this hook. Once I know that they are, then I'm ready to lock them in place. If they're not fanned out perfectly, I recommend just taking your fingernail and pushing those fibers towards the hook. Once you have them where you want them, then we really want to just lock them in place and we want to make sure we get them upright at about a 90 degree angle. Is it essential that they're at that angle? In my opinion, no, but we want at least 75% of them at that angle. So the way to do this, we're going to just grab them in clusters. We're going to look at this as kind of three clusters. There's one cluster, then I'm just going to wrap in a few wraps. Grab a second cluster, same thing, a few wraps. Don't worry about the rest of these. Then finally, I may grab them all, pull them back, or at least try to, and wrap really aggressively towards the base. Now, I'm just going to take a peek at what's going on, see if I can separate them a little bit. I'm just going to do a quick 360 of this fly. Get the thread out of the way. Looks like I have a couple that are really just, they're not conforming the way I want them to. So I'm just going to get those ones out of there. I don't want to mess around with those, those little pieces there. Now at this point, my fly is definitely not finished. I have to add my, either my quill body, a dubbing body. It's really up to me what I'm going to add. To do that, what I recommend, because you have so much stuff going on here, is putting a little saliva on your fingers and just really forcing these fibers forward. Then taking your thread, bring it back to your, oops, bring it back to your tailing fibers, separate them, get them propped at a 45, or get them just a little bit more upright, I shouldn't say a 45. Add in your, your body. Be extra cautious as you're coming forward because you want to make sure that you also get that, that dubbing underneath these. And it might involve a couple figure eight wraps. And then to finish off, the head of these comparadons. I just take them, I make sure I flare them one more time so they have that fan motion. Then I'm going to pull them back and I am going to place dubbing on my thread and I also wrap aggressively back under one more time to really ensure that they're going to be fanned up at that 90 degree angle. And then I would finish the head of the fly. And you can see by us leaving a couple of those eye lengths, we don't have to worry so much about this comparadon wing really just taking over the front of the fly. I really like to leave a really clean head. In this case, I may have put it just a little bit further back um, than I would really want to. It looks like it's about two and a half, um, we'll say, uh, hook eyes back. So we'll just look at this as a practice pattern in that sense since I'm doing this for the video, though I can tell you this is a pattern that I would absolutely fish with, with once it has a body to it. So there's just a quick look one more time at this deer hair comparadon wing. This is something that really tends to drive a lot of tires crazy. Um, don't let it drive you crazy. It's an easy thing to do. And if you don't succeed at first, just try, try again. Don't worry about that deer hair patch. You only have a few dollars invested in that little piece of deer hair. If it doesn't come out right, just grab something, trim it off the hook, and try again until you have it looking the way that, that you want it to look. And once you get those proportions down, it will definitely flow for you as a tire. So now that we've kind of 
looked at this from that tying perspective, I want to talk a little bit more about the Comparadon. So let me change the camera angle and um, we'll talk, we'll discuss it just a little bit more before I conclude the video. Now that we're finished tying this deer hair Comparadon wing, let's talk a little bit more about the pattern in general. Well, this is easily one of my favorite dry flies of all time, and there's a couple reasons why. For starters, this is a pattern that you can fish entirely throughout the hatch once those flies begin popping off the water. It really does a great job at representing three of the stages, the emerger, the done, and the spinner stage as well. So you can fish it with confidence once you start to see those flies in the air. The other thing that I really love about the Comparadon is that it's one of those flies that just tends to fish better as it gets beat up by the fish. Once I've caught a few fish on it and it starts to really display that deer hair all over the place, I know that I can continue to fish it with confidence and that it will fish well as long as it stays together. Well, there's a couple other things that I'd like to mention about this fly. If you don't have any deer hair, you can also substitute some other materials, such as CDC or Snowshoe Rabbit. They both work really well and they have some great properties, some great characteristics uh, that kind of come along with those materials. Though at the end of the day, I always turn back to that deer hair because it just gives a great profile to that fly once it's sitting on the water. And finally, I want to mention that there's three hatches that I really fish this fly throughout. Those are the Blue Wing Olive, the PMD slash Sulfur, and the Isonychia. Though keep in mind that this Comparadon can be tied in different colors to represent all kinds of different mayflies out there. So don't be afraid to experiment with those that are hatching in your local area. Well, with all of that said, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. If you'd like to watch more of my fly fishing and fly tying videos, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook page that you can like for some regular fly tying and fly fishing updates. Well, as always, thank you so much for viewing this fly tying tutorial, and I hope you learned a little bit more about the deer hair comparison.